Hi people, it's Chili here from Live Listener Race, and I'm bringing you a special episode of From Worst to Best. And it's in regards to a band that I hold near and dear. It's a bit of a black sheep of the metal community at the moment. It's a band called Iced Earth. Now, for people who don't know Iced Earth, or at least don't know the history, I can't really blame you. They've kind of been a bit underground for a little bit, and probably relatively unknown. But they're a Power metal trio is sort of power metal, thrash metal, heavy metal, whatever metal, just something metal out of a Florida kind of area, I believe. Now, this band, I fell in love with them some two decades ago, and I've been listening to a lot of their music over time. And if you don't know the history behind Iced Earth, uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown. For the Iced Earth fans below who know the history and just want to get to the albums, I will put in the timestamp below where the start of the video will be. Now, just a quick one, if you're unsure, they're a band that have a revolving door of several band members. The most, the only consistent person is John Schaffer, the rhythm guitarist and backing vocalist in regards to the band. And he has kind of landed himself in some hot water not too long ago in regards to the uh, Capitol Hill riots, I think it is, in America. He was caught on some footage attending the riots and, as such, faced a bit of a jail sentence. So, the band's in a limbo status as to whether or not they will go on and continue or whether they will just split up because he can't tour at the moment. He can't really do much, at, actually. So, there's a bit of a up in the air situation as to the future of Iced Earth. I mean, without Iced Earth is nothing without John Schaffer. It's his band, pretty much. It's just other people that have been there in the meantime. Uh, they've had several singers, several drummers, several bassists, several guitarists in the meantime, and they've had a few common ones in regards to that as well. But at the moment, pretty much after the events of uh, John Schaffer being caught on film. All the band quit, except for the long-time drummer, um, Brent uh, Smedley, I think is his name. Sorry. Yeah, Brent Smedley has been the long-time drummer, has been off and on again since roughly 1995. So, I wanted to give you, of course, uh, that little brief history of the band. And I just also wanted to continue with a small little joke. They have some hot sauce out right now, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. Obviously, the band's name is Iced Earth, bringing you hot sauce. Amazing. Great marketing. Now, we are going to start this uh, list from the worst uh, albums all the way to my favorite albums. I'm going to go through why I think these are and give you reasons, of course, why I think they're in the best. For most of the part... They're not really terrible albums. I could listen to any of these albums. Uh, but of course, we have to begin somewhere. So we're going to start with the first one, The Crucible of Man, Something Wicked Part 2. Now, this comes off the back of a bit of an ambitious project by uh, John Schaffer and co. And it also... It, it's basically a second part album to a story that he was telling from the uh, the lead logo. And this, I think it was The Sations. I can't remember the name of them now, um, but it was a very ambitious project, marred with a bit of um, a lineup change as well. They had a previous singer who they changed, then they brought in, I think it was Stuart Block. Yeah, Stu Block was brought in for the second part of the album. No, sorry, Matt Barlow. Sorry, Matt Barlow returns for this album, and makes it a little bit disjointed if you're listening from part one to part two because their vocal differences are very noticeable. So, unfortunately, this is where we will start in regards to this list. I, I consider it a pretty dreary, dull album. Nothing really going for it. Um, it just continues on with the story, which builds up, takes too long to get to the point, and kind of falls flat in the end, you know, um, here is a man who's supposed to be, well, not really a man, but here is someone who's supposed to be like a godlike creature, kind of second-guessing his whole, um, I guess, principle on 
you know thinking but it, it took a it took two albums and by the time it took you know the second half of that second album to come to that realization i i don't know it's yeah for i think the album's a bit over an hour long something like 17 tracks or whatever and it's a bit of a yeah it's a bit of a long one to go through and you know there's a few decent tracks there minions of the watch and the revealing and stuff like that but then you know a gift or a curse kind of breaks up the tracks and it just doesn't it feels disjointed you know when mm, something wicked gets thrown in there for part three yeah not my favorite album and i would say probably definitively would be up there at the worst part of it still i'd play it through it's yeah something i wouldn't avoid it's just something i don't go back to very often so we're going to continue on of course to the next album and unfortunately it's going to be their first album iced earth now you had to start somewhere i guess but you know this is a band still trying to find its footing they put out a few demos for the years before but it it yeah it, it's a band that just doesn't know where they are as of yet it's not a bad recording again it's got some great tracks you know colors and written on the walls again um life and death yeah not not too bad these ones uh but you know with the singer i I think the singer for the time who was uh sorry gene adam sorry just doing a little quick search on that one his vocals don't suit what their style would become you know they're like I said, they're a bit of a power metal kind of band with elements of thrash in particular in the early days. Uh, but then you've got these vocal styles which are a bit kind of death metal-y, I guess. No, it sounds a bit like Merciful Fate. That's who I'm thinking of. You know, King Diamond-esque. And it just doesn't suit the songs too well. But I guess maybe that's because I've been used to the singer that would come in and replace him. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not a bad album, especially, the, and I love the album cover on the reissue, uh, great, fantastic artwork there, so not a bad album, but unfortunately, given what comes next, this is where it would sit at this moment, you know, again, look, these albums could shift and change as well, they could move around a fair bit, but, uh, right, as of recording, this is where these albums sit, so... The next one I would come up with, it would be Framing, Ar- Framing Armageddon, Something Wicked Part 1. Yeah, this is not a bad album again. It's just not that strong. You know, I remember, um, oh, what was it, 10,000 Strong, the single coming out. And the video clip, it looked like it was incomplete because it had this weird 3D graphics and stuff floating around. And I'm like, cool, is that the demo? Is, it, is the finished version coming out soon? great riff i love that track um but again they got very ambitious for where they were and in making a two-part album it just felt a little bit felt a bit flat i guess the rest of it is kind of forgettable i guess so yeah it's setting up the story maybe it could have been culled into one album or something but yeah and on this album as well you had uh Tom, um, Ripper Owens, what was his name? Tim Ripper Owens, who was the replacement lead singer for Judas Priest for a little while. And again, his vocals like really high up there uh, compared to the more baritone levels, I guess, of Matt and Co and Stu. Not, yeah, not, not a very, div- very distinct, very different, but a little bit too different for their styles. Not a bad singer, just not the right fit and i kind of get the feeling that's probably one of the reasons why they moved on from him after that you know but again yeah it's a bit of a flat album not my favorite so we keep going on to the next album a bit more of a recent one uh plagues of babylon i remember this coming out and it was a i loved the album upon first hearing and replay a couple of bunch of times really and i thought there was a really great album you know i even caught them on the tour uh in australia when they i think they came out for their second ever tour and they were doing it for the plagues of babylon 
uh, album, and fuck, it was just this incredibly small venue, and probably only a few hundred people packed into it, kind of reminded me of uh, a few of the metal clubs that used to be around in Sydney, um, Agincourt? hotel i think if you remember it i think it's gone now agincourt but hell if you remember it you know so that was a really great concert but in hindsight yeah there's a lot of tracks that i would just kind of skip you know but the first three tracks you know plagues of bag uh Pla- plagues of babylon democide the culling amazing uh there's also a really good cover of the track uh highway man which is of course originally by johnny cash uh, Willie Nelson, and I'm gonna forget the third person, but of course the original was a country rock version. So to hear Iced Earth, a power metal act, doing a cover of this was very intriguing, very different. Um, but yeah, I I liked that cover actually. I thought it was a really good track. So yeah, it's probably. I probably haven't listened to this album in a little while, and I should go back to it actually after I record this. But again, it's sitting up there for a reason. There's a fair few skippable tracks as you go on. It's a bit of a long album. So we move into the next one, and this might be a bit controversial to some. Uh, the Dark Saga, for me. Now, why do I pick the, dus- the Dark Saga so high in this list? I didn't really listen to it too much. I didn't really enjoy it either. It just didn't vibe with me the last three tracks are absolutely incredible though but i don't know i just didn't like it too well yeah i died for you was probably one of the first iced earth songs i really heard and i loved that track you know a uh, great song but the rest of it you know it's okay i think it's a, a themed album here uh written for the character spawn the who is I think a DC character? I don't know Spawn. I don't I don't read his comics. I don't really read any comics actually. So for me, it's like okay, I I don't know who Spawn is. I don't know the backstory too well. I could Google it, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So bit of a miss on me. But again, there's some decent tracks there. You know, like like I said, Scarred, Slave to Dark, Question of Heaven. Um, I didn't like the intro song, Dark Saga, I thought it's just drags its feet and didn't really go too far, but yeah, it's not a bad album, I did, I did play this recently actually, and I, uh, enjoyed it more than I remembered, at least in hindsight, so yeah, not too bad, but again, this is where it sits as of the recording of this. Okay, so we go on to the next album here, uh, Horror Show. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. (laughs) This is another one of the ambitious projects that they went through with to a theme. Uh, They do this a lot on their albums. And in regards to Horror Show, of course, it's based around horror themes. Of course, you know, Wolf, Damien, one of the best, one of the strongest bass tracks from Iced Earth. Damien, near 10 minutes long song, you know, based on The Omen, of course. And, you know... uh, Ghost of Freedom, that was probably my second track I ever heard from Iced Earth as well. Great track, you know, and these things are pretty um, interchangeable, I guess, in their themes. You know, most of the people will know of these tracks or know of the themes that they're singing. You know, Wolf, obviously, um, based on, you know, the sanguine type of uh, interchangeable person, the Wolf Man, of course. Uh, Jack, Jackal, sorry, Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde, uh, based on the famous story, Imhotep, um, Frankenstein, Dracula, I can't forget to mention here, the Phantom Opera Ghost, one of the finest outros from the band, one of the greatest tracks they've actually recorded, uh, great duet there, um, I don't, I've completely forgotten who the duet was with, but... It's an amazing song, great ride there, it's not a cover of the Iron Maiden track, uh, it's their own version, but it's a, it's such an amazing album, and many would argue this was like the last time they were really amazing, you know, that was shit 20 years ago now, but an incredible album to hear, so one amazing piece, this is probably my second album I bought, and it was not a disappointment. It was a great album to hear. 
So we move on, and this is an album that uh, surprised me, actually. I re-listened to this the other day, um, and upon hearing it, because I heard a lot of comments, you know, people were saying, oh, you got to listen to this, you got to listen to this album, it's really good. And when I re-listened to it, um, it blew me away. So the next album I've got is Dystopia. Uh, one of the more recent entries, again, I think it was the first one with Stu Block, and... I am, uh, yes, the first album that with new vocalist Stu Block, and it's a really brutal album. It's a solid piece there, you know. Uh, tracks like V, uh, Dystopia, of course. Um, what else was there? There was Anguish of Youth was another brutally <laughs> brutal piece there. But this is like I was saying, it, it it was something that was a bit of a hidden gem. I don't think I really played any tracks or probably one or two tracks, but it was something I didn't listen to in its entirety, and when I did get around to finally listening to this album, I'm like, shit, this is really good, you know, the riffs are solid, the energy is more, uh, there's more energy compared to previous albums from, you know, the Something Wicked's part one and two there, uh, they're just kind of back to basics with their heavy metal, you know, bring on the sludgy, you know, great fantastic uh, guitar work there as always from the band but yeah it's just one amazing album so we're going to continue on with this and uh, the next one is their most recent album incorruptible uh this this was an incredible playlist a short relatively short album that just grabbed me from first playthrough you know uh, great heathen army black flag wow you know Black para and rum, <laughs> but oh, just so many great tracks there. Raven Wing, you know, um, Ghost Dance was an interesting little um, instrumental piece there. Uh, all the way, the whole thing, really, the whole album plays through, and it's got a pretty damn good album cover on that one. I love that, you know, the burning thing, and. I guess I have to mention this was obviously their last album back in I think it was 2017 it came out. It's interesting I guess if events that transpired recently hadn't happened what the band may have moved into moving forward and hopefully they'll continue to but again band history up in chaos and we don't know what the fuck's going to go on and what's going to happen so yeah if this was their last album, I wouldn't be complaining. It's a very good album, you know. But I would love to also hear more <laughs> if they're going in that direction. Great album there. Uh, now, this uh, next piece is going to be highly controversial for many, I guess. But I'm going to put down Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is regarded as a fan favourite, probably one of their best albums. But to me, I just... Yeah, I <laughs> I have many other... I have the other albums coming up I have reasons for. This one I kind of bought late on in the mix and I guess I kept going back to their previous albums that I'd bought. It's a great album. By no means does it have any terrible tracks. Of course, Burning Times, uh, Watching Over Me, Disciples of the Lie. Um, yeah, just all the tracks there are incredible songs. There's, I don't think there's really a dull moment when it comes to this album but as far as it comes it just didn't resonate with me too high it, it on a personal level i should probably say i you know again i enjoy this album i love this album but i hold the others in such high regard that you'll see why <laughs> i guess so yes Controversial, I guess I'll probably get some hate on that one. You guys go, ah, oh, no, 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 well, hold up, hold up. Before you start typing away and saying, no, you are stupid for that. This is just a list of my opinion. You you guys have an opinion, and if you think that's their best album, good for you. That's your opinion. This is just my opinion, all right? So, of course, the next one I'll put down, The Glorious Burden. And I know people will be annoyed by this choice here above the other one. But hear me out. This one uh, was an album, I remember it came out around the time that I was getting into Iced Earth, and I waited for it in the CD, you know, wait, I ordered it, sorry, and it came in and I got the album, 
and uh, I covered this in an episode about Ted Nugent, of course, they open up with Star Spangled Banner, don't cover that song, please, but uh, the rest of the album is really good, and I think it's um, impressive that it continues on in their theme where from their previous album three years prior was about horror this one's about history and of course i mean there's tracks like when the eagle cries which is modern history uh that if you don't know the track is about 9 11 um and is although for a power ballad it's a highly impressive power ballad it's an incredible track you know um you can feel the emotion on that track like that is that is genuine when they wrote that track that wasn't i i can tell that that just came out instantly pretty much you know um i mean matt barlow does an incredible job singing that bringing all his emotion to it and hell he would even join i think it was the police shortly he would leave the band and join the police i believe in inspiration to the events that transpired on 9-11 so yeah you know he he holds it with high regard and i you know it's hard to not hear this song and feel emotional um for the events that happened that day other than that you know you've got declaration day of course um based on the Declaration of Independence of America and a few other incredible tracks there. Greenface, The Reckoning, Don't Tread on Me, uh, Red Baron, Blue Max, World War One Pilot, uh, Pilots, I should say, sorry. Uh, great duet there with the Red Baron, Blue Max, you know, uh, songs. There are a few tracks there I probably wouldn't care about, like Hollow Man, maybe Attila, uh, Waterloo, very impressive little song there but i can't go past this album without mentioning the last three tracks here uh the devil to pay hold at all costs and high water mark in my opinion their finest songs ever put to record and probably their finest half an hour uh, yeah roughly half an hour they've ever written i would love to catch iced earth and hear them play these three songs it would be a dream of mine the story from what i read when john was getting um the inspiration to write his songs you know he obviously based it on the history of events of you know the red baron blue max attila um valley forge waterloo all that jazz and obviously it's heavily american influence um it also had a lot to do with again 9-11 but the i mean it is it's kind of like a big waving flag ceremony thing the flag but anyway the album besides that it's really incredible when he was writing he he, he loves his civil war um he loves the history of the civil war of course you can make jokes put them aside but the when he wrote the song, he wasn't happy with how it turned out. It was, you know, a five-minute track or something, and he just, you know, oh, I don't want to, this This is just terrible. This is crap. So from what I read, he actually went to visit Gettysburg, did a tour there, and he got the inspiration to write these three tracks, which kind of serve as, I think, the, the partially a prologue with High Water Mark, sorry, with Hold at All Costs, and tells of the battle that came, and obviously the final, uh, what is it, Pickett's Charge? No, uh, the final charge, sorry, from Gettysburg that cost them the battle. But I, the entire song has an incredible setup. You know, um, the way that they tell both sides and how um, the song's like, oh, you are my brother and I can't raise my sword, you know, God, I can't raise my sword against you, God strike me down if I do so um it's just absolutely insane uh especially with the devil to pay talking about what's at stakes and the battle um i think there's a part of the track where they're talking about pickett's charge uh you know fix bayonets and not my mark charge you know and all this incredible soundscape behind it and the telling of the stories um i mean america's bloodiest battle ever fought should deserve a track this grandiose and epic and i think they've done very well 
to tell a story that does it. You know, if say what you will about Iced Earth, but this is one incredibly undervalued or overlooked track, I should say. You know, and to me, whenever I go on a road trip, I have these three tracks always playing in the playlist because it's such an incredible songs to be hearing those three in a row. Absolutely amazing, especially when it comes to high water mark and they're talking about the the final charge, and then it's got the anticipation of the guitars and you can feel the tension with the guitars. And then the cannon fire and go, you know, when the actual battle taking place and oh, goosebumps now, you know, <laughs> absolutely incredible album to me, very uh, personal album. I loved this album when I first bought it and I played it through so many times. That is why I feel it's higher than something this way than something wicked this way comes. That's my reason, people. So I hope that's a good enough reason. Before we get into the final two, I hope you can find it in your heart to like our videos, comment below what do you thought, what your thoughts are at least in regards to this list, and subscribe for more music-related content. Don't forget we put videos out every Friday. It could be five-minute reviews, or it could be the videos on live listen and raised in which we pick three bands to uh, discuss at depth and go into who's going to be erased, who we're going to listen to live once only, and who we're going to listen to forever in studio albums only. So, before we get on to the final two, which ones do you reckon it's going to be? Comment below. We have, in the second place, Night of the Storm Rider. This album is incredible. Fantastic, thrashy little album. Second album out, and it just, oh, great. You can see how Ice Earth has progressed over, you know, from their first album to their second one. They've got much more thrashier in their piece, and I guess that's why I liked it a lot more. I was into that thrash metal uh, back in the day, and I, it drew me to this album. You know, fantastic. Angels Holocaust, uh, Storm Rider, The Path I Choose, Mystical End. Yes, fantastic, fantastic tracks. And it it really grabbed me, this album. You know, I I loved this piece. I loved the remastered uh, edition with the cover album. Fantastic album there. I just fucking love it. <laughs> I don't think I can say anything more to that album. Maybe it's a bit more controversial for being so high up in my list, but that's how I feel. It's a fantastic album, and I highly recommend people listen to it. So, we get into the final album, Burnt offerings holy shit this was the first album i ever bought from iced earth and i remember just looking at its album cover on the remastered edition and like what is that <laughs> this is it's just i'll flash it up on screen i guess now but it is such a brutally impressive artwork there you know and it is overbearing i guess which is suitable for the album it is such a... It's been described by the band as the darkest album they've put out, and shit, you can really tell straight away from the start. Burnt Offerings, first track. Such a fast, aggressive track. It just grabs you. And I remember playing that uh, playing that song, listening to the solo, thinking, holy shit, how fast can you play a guitar? You know, that is pure thrash in there. It is so brutally heavy metal, and it's so good. It's amazing. Burnt Offerings, probably my favorite track ever written by Iced Earth. But, of course, we can't go past the rest of the album here with Last December, Diary, Brainwashed, Burning Oasis, which, to my recollection, might have been an, an earlier song they wrote back in the 80s, and they finally re-recorded it for an album. Might be wrong, if so, correct me below... But, you know, this whole album, I would play it endlessly, and every time I got a new album, <laughs> I'd, I'd go back to this pretty much after playing that, you know, and it would just be in high repetition. Always was, and always will be. And I can't forget, of course, the final closing track, and the best closing track they've ever written, Dante's Inferno, the 16 and a half minute closer that details, of course, the... Um, Stage, what is it, the six stages, the seven stage, the seven rings of hell or something like that from the poem by, oh shit, I've had a mental blank on the, the poem, drum, drum, oh, I can't remember now, but 
Fuck, that is such an epic closer. And I'm pretty sure they did that on Alive in Athens, and it was an incredibly amazing version. <laughs> Absolutely brutal song for a 16-minute-odd heavy metal track. So, yeah, this is one incredible album that I just can't get over. It's, without a doubt, that will stay in the top spot for my best Iced Earth album. So, yes, I love that album. <clears throat> so, people, that is my list in regards to Iced Earth from worst to best. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Obviously, you guys may have different opinions or you might agree with me. Let me know below or on Twitter in regards to your thoughts, if you disagreed or if you agreed, or what would be your top three album spots. Let me know. I'm curious to find out, and I read all the comments. So, as always, don't forget to uh, subscribe to us to stay up to date to the videos, get notifications in regards to that shit. So, enjoy your day, and uh, go listen to some Iced Earth. Remember, to stay spicy as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please consider liking it and sharing it with your friends. And also don't forget to subscribe to our Chili Con Carnage crew to stay updated on our newest videos. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Live Listener Race. Please join us on those media platforms for all kinds of updates and discussions regarding music. And as always, stay spicy.